guys and welcome back to my channel. I am super excited to be sharing with you guys our recent trip to Tokyo, Japan. I thought I'd show you guys what we did, how to snag some really good tickets for a few things we did, and just like the general area we stayed at. A lot of you liked my New York City guide, so I figured if any of you were going to Tokyo, maybe this would come in uh, handy. The first leg of our flight was just from Lisbon to Paris. We flew with Air France. Unfortunately, my nose started bleeding during this flight, which is not usual, so I had to switch into my fiance's t-shirt but other than that the trip was fairly smooth no complaints about air france the only thing is that we did have a slight delay which was not um, their fault so we did have to do some running at the paris airport and we were very sweaty once we finally boarded our flight to tokyo from paris to tokyo it was 13 and a half hours on the way there and about 15 hours on the way back and we took an overnight flight which was a little bit more pleasant because you can just sleep through it one of the things I will recommend was this little foot hammock that I got from Amazon. It was like $12 and it actually made the whole experience and economy feel much, much better on my legs. So if you don't have one of these, highly recommend. It takes up very little space in your pack. We arrived in Tokyo the next afternoon, so it was 6 p.m. when we landed and it was a little bit rainy, but luckily we didn't have a lot of rain during our trip. We went in early June um, and while there was some rain, it wasn't terrible. It was a nice time to go. One of the first thing we noticed was that the metro system is so efficient and everyone lines up so nicely. I highly recommend adding the Suica card, which is their transportation card to your Apple wallet, because if you do this, you'll be able to top it up directly using your credit card and you'll never have to depend on any machines or anything like that. We just found it very handy because you just tap your phone and go right in and you can see how much money is still left. It's just a very efficient way of doing it. The first place we stayed at in our trip was this area called Ginza and we stayed at the Hotel Grand Back in Ginza. We had an excellent experience. This is not sponsored at all. I just like sharing where we stay to make it a little bit easier for you guys to just, you know, have a reference point. One of the first things we noticed was that like the lights turned on automatically, music started playing, the shutters raised, and their toilets are really, really funny if you're not from Japan. They have like a little jet with water for your front and your rear and you can dry off and it's very interesting and we decided not to go out for our first night in because we were very tired and instead we just picked up a bunch of very random Japanese snacks and gave ourselves a nice big stomach ache but it was worth it everything is really affordable we use 7-eleven a lot they have supermarkets everywhere and it's a great place to get cash from an ATM as well because they do take international cards Next morning, we woke up at around 5 a.m., not by choice, but by jet lag, and so we just decided to make the best of it. Our hotel did have breakfast included, and it was kind of like predefined every morning, and this morning was French toast. It was absolutely delicious. And then we just headed back to the metro. One of the things I did want to showcase to you guys is this wonderful belt bag that I have from the brand Andar, who's very kindly sponsoring today's video. I find that when I go on trips like this, it's very important to me to keep everything very close to me. And in Japan, it's especially important that you always have your passport on you. And so a belt bag like this is perfect because I was able to keep it close to me and have everything I needed. I had my pilot wallet, which I've showed you guys in another video. I had all of my cash, a little bit of like necessity necessities and pills and band-aids on me um even a little bit of makeup and i found it to be very handy so if you guys want to get yours for 15 percent off you just have to use the code sophia a15 highly recommend the leather is beautiful the quality is awesome and i honestly have this bag on my body pretty much everywhere i go not just on trips so i highly recommend i'll tell you guys a little bit more about that later in the video so the first place we stopped at was the Art Aquarium in Ginza. We decided to start here because we weren't sure how tired we were gonna be this day. So we figured doing something close by for the first day was the way to go. And it's just in a big kind of department store. The tickets were $16 per person. We did buy them ahead of time. And it's basically just this beautiful aquarium art exhibition. It has these beautiful fish 
It has really cool light work and it's a very relaxing experience. I recommend going first thing in the morning because we were one of the first in and we noticed within a little bit that it started getting very busy. So if you want to enjoy it very calmly, I recommend being one of the first there. Next up, we got in the metro once again and explored the area near the Imperial Palace Gardens. Once again, we had this day scheduled in very loosely, but it worked out great. So I'm recommending you guys do this as well because it was just a very pleasant overall experience. The gardens were very well kept and clean. They will ask to look in your bag in case you have a bigger bag. Just be mindful of that. But for the most part, it kind of felt a little bit like the Central Park of Japan, where there was a huge contrast between all the buildings and all of the nature. And I highly recommend just walking around and exploring this area. Do remember to stay hydrated if you're going in the summer because it gets very warm very fast. But it was a very beautiful experience. Then, you guessed it, we got on the metro once again and we headed over to Tokyo Sky Tree. It was $13 per person. Underneath the sky tree, there is this awesome little mall, so I highly recommend grabbing something to eat there. They have a lot of very cute restaurants, and everything is very affordable. The food here was absolutely delicious, and I think we ended up paying about 15 euros uh, for both people. But do remember not to leave any tips because it's actually very rude to leave tips in Japan. And then after that, we kind of just walked through the mall. There was like a Pokemon store, a little Kirby cafe, and just exploring everything is very fun. We also grabbed these ice creams, they were delicious. We were just trying to wait until our slot in time. We did book the tickets ahead of time and I recommend you do so as well. And we just showed up at our scheduled time. And then we got to enjoy 360 views of all of the city. And it's really the first time where we realized just how big this city is. So I highly recommend you take some time to kind of just take it all in. There's a point at which you can even walk over the glass. I don't recommend doing it if you're not a fan of heights, but if you are, it's very fun. And then we kind of just went back to exploring and seeing all these cute little dogs that everyone has. And of course we had to stop at one of these machines to buy something completely useless, but very kawaii. At night we went back to the Ginza area. They have a lot of shops, everything from Uniqlo to higher end stores. So if you want to shop, I highly recommend doing so at the end of the day when it's a little nice and fresh. Day two, we headed over to Shibuya. We took the metro, it took us about 20 minutes from where we were. Everyone told us to avoid the metro during rush hours. We didn't actually consciously do it and we never really had a problem. So I just recommend checking it out and seeing what you feel comfortable with. The first place we stopped at was Shibuya Sky. It's another viewpoint and we did buy tickets ahead of time once again. I believe that the tickets for this one were about $13.5 per person. And we also had a scheduled time to show up. And this one in particular is very cool because it gives you views of Shibuya Crossing from above. I've also heard it's very beautiful during sunset and at night, but we prefer to do it in the early morning because we had a busy day. Here, I just recommend taking your time, taking it all in. Um, it does get very warm even though it's high up, so do keep that in mind for whatever time of the year you're going to visit. But other than that, it's a very, very fun thing to do. We are dreamers of the Sure. 
By the way, I also looked into whether Tokyo had some kind of New York City pass or something like that because it was very handy when we went to New York City and unfortunately they don't have anything that's worth it. They do have like a city pass. It ends up making everything the same price as if you buy things individually. So in this particular case, we just decided to buy things individually, but you can save some money by buying things online ahead of time. Inside, they also have a little bit of an art exposition and below this viewpoint, there is also a shopping mall, which is nice to spend some time at. And then we crossed over and went to Shibuya Crossing. We kind of just stood there for a while and admired it. To be honest, I thought it was gonna be a little bit busier than it actually was. This is what it looks like when people are crossing, but I believe that we were maybe not there during a busy period. Maybe it just wasn't like the right time of the day. It was still very cool. And then we stopped at the Hachiku statue. If you've seen the movie, you know what it's about. Then we headed over to the Starbucks Roastery. This is a very cool concept where they kind of show you how they grind the coffee beans. They show you different ways of making things like matcha and tea. And if you do try any of the coffees, you get a little card proving that you've tried it, which you can collect. And although it's not a very traditional Japanese thing to do, I've never seen something like this anywhere else. So we thought it was very interesting. As you can see, I did enjoy my tea. Our very last activity of the day and probably one of the highlights of this trip was Team Lab Planets. It's $25 per person and this one you really do have to book ahead of time. And what it is is like a fully immersive art experience where every room is meant to cater to different senses and experiences. This particular room was a squishy room you kind of had to go through. Then there was this beautiful light exposition room where you kind of walk through all of these LED strings that form different patterns and colors and they play to music as well. And it's a very cool sensation. I recommend just taking your time exploring this room. Do keep in mind that it does get fairly busy. So I would recommend trying to be one of the first people in for your designated time slot. That's how we got this room to be so empty because it was fairly empty when we went in. We had the 6 p.m slot and we made sure to be one of the first in at 6 p.m. This room had about knee-high warm water and all of these little koi fish were projected onto the water. It was a very cool experience. I do recommend you either wear shorts or something that can easily be rolled up because you will have to roll up your pants, but don't worry, they disinfect everyone's feet right before you go in. So the water is very clean and we had a very good experience cleanliness wise. Then you'll get into a room that is filled with these colorful balls. Um, some of them, if you tap them, they do change color. You're supposed to do this. A lot of people were like mad at us for hitting the balls, but there is a lady holding the sign at the entrance of the room that explicitly said you're supposed to do it. So don't let tourists who are not paying attention deter you from fully experiencing this room. Last but not least, there was the flower room. It was a gorgeous experience. They make sure that not a lot of people go in at the same time so you can truly fully experience it. And they let you have about five to 10 minutes in the room. And then you can come back in if you didn't have enough time. So any of these rooms, if you really wanna enjoy them again, you're allowed to experience them as many times as you want. You have a time to come in, but you're not forced to go out at any point, unless it closes, obviously. The last room has these little beans that once again, you're supposed to like find the one that you can touch that'll change all the colors. Again, we got a lot of weird stares, people looking at us, so we were touching the exhibition. There was a lady standing with a sign saying you're supposed to.
We had a delicious breakfast. Let me start off by prefacing that our breakfast was delicious this day and I would do anything to try that again because it was amazing. And the reason we decided to go to Disney Sea is because the Disney Sea concept is supposed to be unique to Tokyo where it doesn't exist anywhere else. It was a rainy day, so it wasn't like the best circumstances to go. I don't know if I would recommend wasting a whole day on Disney Sea because I thought it was going to be much different personally than it actually was. We had to wait a really long time for each attraction and it wasn't anything too special I know some of you are gonna disagree and you know please don't hate me in the comments but I just didn't think that it was that wow the rides were very short you were waiting a long time obviously everything's in Japanese but you're not gonna complain about that because it is in Japan which makes sense but just keep that in mind if you're going with little children they won't really understand the majority of what's going on but I will say that the snacks were delicious so we made this day worth it by going around Disney Sea and trying every single snack that we could. Everything is very affordable compared to Disney's in places like LA and Paris, for example. There were some attractions that you will recognize, like this one was Indiana Jones, and they also have the Tower of Terror. And if you wanna buy Disney years, this is the place to do it because usually they're like 30, $40 and here there were only like 10 to 15. So this is the place to buy Disney years if you want to get your hands on a pair of them. The concept of Disney Sea is that there's different little ports kind of, where there's one that's supposed to be America, one that's supposed to be Italy. Overall, we did feel like we had quite a few days in Japan. So we weren't too sad that we used this day on Disney Sea, but I feel like the next time we go, we probably wouldn't be doing it. Maybe we would have tried Universal or Nintendo World instead. By the way, I saw some pictures of these green Mokis that were meant to be the little aliens from Toy Story. We tried to find them. It turns out that they were $32 for four Mokis. So we ended up not having them because we didn't think it was worth it. So if you've seen pictures of those online, just be warned, they are extremely overpriced. The light show at the end of the day, however, was very beautiful, so I do highly recommend the light show. So before heading over to Japan, we did order what's called JR passes and we use them to go to Kyoto on day four. JR passes are bullet train passes that allow you to use the bullet trains in an unlimited way uh, for a set price and be aware that you can only get this if you order it to your own country. They do not really sell them in Japan because these are meant just for tourists. So what you do is you order them online, they get delivered to your house and then you exchange them for the pass once you actually arrive either at the airport or one of the train stations and what you do is you take your JR pass which you only get one of so you really cannot lose it and you exchange it for bullet train tickets on the same day there are some trains that you are not allowed to take but it's very few so just make sure you're getting on the right trains and you can either do reserved seats or just sit in the non-reserved seat area we've done both and both were good experiences so not a huge problem and we paid about $200 each to travel for seven days which was a very good price if you compare it to what you would have paid for individual tickets Gone. so when we got to Kyoto and after we went to our hotel to check in the first thing we did was head on over to the Fushimi Inara gates 
This is a temple area and it's very beautiful and it's honestly just worth spending as many hours as you want just going around and exploring. It is a lot of walking, it is slightly uphill. Do bring water if you're going during a warm season, but it is a wonderful experience. It's very gorgeous and very unlike anything I'd ever seen in my entire life. One thing I highly recommend doing is looking through the little stores between the train station and the actual temple because they have very cool souvenirs there and our favorite personally was the chopsticks store. There was a store that was filled with chopsticks, all kinds of different prices. We paid for example $8 per pair but we picked these beautiful wooden ones that we were able to get engraved with our names and we thought this was like such a meaningful souvenir to bring from a country like Japan. I also bought my best friend her own pair also with her name on it. After going here, we headed on over to the Kyoto station, which in itself is really worth exploring. It's very big and if you go all the way to the top floor, there's this little park or garden at the top with very cool views of the city. There's also a department store attached to the station in case you're looking to shop, but if you just want to get a cool free view of the city, then I highly recommend it. One thing to note about the buses in Kyoto is that unlike in Tokyo where you enter through the front and pay immediately, in Kyoto you enter through the back of the bus and you pay as you're exiting so this is just something to keep in mind At night we just found a mall and we ended up just getting some food from the food court because once you're in a country like Japan, anywhere you eat is honestly a very fun experience. The next day we headed on over to Nara Park, which you can use your JR Pass for this by the way, and it was probably one of my favorite experiences. We started off the day with this magnificent breakfast. I cannot tell you how delicious it was. Again, wish I could have it again. And we headed to Nara Park to go meet the Nara deer. The Nara deer just live loosely here and there are little stands that sell deer safe snacks for them but keep in mind that if you try to feed them next to where they sell the snacks you'll find some very persistent deer. They will endlessly chase you and try to get snacks from you but the very cool thing is that they do bow at you if you give them a snack which is very cute but do be warned that they're very persistent as you see these girls were running away from them and this one nibbled me. Um, it didn't hurt. They don't hurt you. But it was just very funny because I wasn't expecting to get bit by a deer on my butt. <laughs> my recommendation is that you buy the snacks and you walk away from the area where they're selling the snacks because that's where you'll find slightly less persistent deer. It was very funny and now that we look back at it, we giggle every time. This one deer kept chasing Imanu and relentlessly trying to convince him to give him some snacks. As you can see here, they were having a full conversation between the two of them and it was hilarious to watch. We 
really enjoyed just exploring this whole area. There were a lot of temples, a lot of beautiful things to see. And at the very end of our time here at Nara Park, I ran into possibly the most polite deer in this entire world. She was very polite. She kept bowing at me every time I gave her a snack. I ended up giving her like a whole entire pack of snacks just because she was so adorable. If you move away from the snack stands, the deer are very, very nice. The ones next to the snack stands are extremely persistent. Then we saw a Hello Kitty train, which was very amusing. And um, we got on another train to go over to the Ariashiyama Bamboo Grove. Very easy to get there once you get to your train station. We just followed the crowd and it kind of was the case with every place we went. Um, if you follow the crowd, you usually get to the touristy spot. So this bamboo grove specifically was beautiful. I'd never seen bamboo this tall in my entire life. We love that this part of the trip was so nature-based and a little bit out of the city. We also ran into this beautiful garden. We had to pay about $5 to go in, in total, I believe, but we think it was very beautifully well taken care of, and it was just a very serene experience. We really took our time to sit down and just enjoy the views. over to Kiyomizu Dera. I'm probably butchering all of these beautiful names, but it's another temple area and do be warned that it does require quite a big walk up, but it is very worth it. It wasn't anything that we couldn't handle and we're not like avid hikers or anything, but it is like a nicely inclined 20 minute walk up, I want to say. Then we got to the temples, saw a lot of koi fish and just basked in the beauty of the architecture of these buildings. They're genuinely gorgeous. As we were there, we were kind of looking up a little bit more history behind them because everything is usually in Japanese. But I find that if you just try to enjoy the views while there and then come home and kind of research what you looked at or research it ahead of time, then you're really able to kind of full circle the experience. end of this day we decided to actually go back to the Arishiyama bamboo grove area because when we stopped at that train station we saw an advertisement for like a romantic train trail and what we ended up doing is that this train goes from there to point let's say b and then b and back so what we did is what we took the train to where this little romantic scenery route stops and we boarded there and made our way back to the Ariyashima train station just because there were a lot less people boarding this way. We were able to get tickets on the same day by doing this, by going where the train usually stops and taking the route back, but it is recommended that you buy tickets ahead of time just to be able to guarantee a spot because they are seated spots and you can get standing tickets, but it's beautiful to see the views, so I recommend getting a seated ticket. And that same day, we boarded the bullet train back to Tokyo and checked into our last hotel that was in a different area than we first stayed at. It was near the Sujinku area. I don't know how to pronounce that. Oh, 
we did a lot of stops at 7-Eleven for like sushi for dinner in days that we were tired. The next day we went over to the Shibuya area. We saw these people doing like real life Mario Kart. It was very cool looking. And we had to stop by for the famous fluffy pancakes. I saw pictures and videos of them all over the internet and I had to try. There are two main chains from what I saw. It was Flippers that we tried and there's the Happy Pancake. But Flippers was amazing. The pancakes do take a little long to bake. Do calculate about an hour of your time to spend here. But we ended up having both sweet pancakes and salty because they were absolutely delicious and I highly recommend. Right next door is the Pokemon Center in Nintendo World. So if this is something you think you'll enjoy, I recommend passing by. We did buy some souvenirs for family and friends that like Nintendo games and Pokemon characters. And we just had a lot of fun looking at everything and exploring. The same mall has a lot of stores, so you guessed it, once again we kind of roamed around and just took our time looking through everything before we headed back out and explored. I genuinely just recommend like getting lost within the city because there are so many stores and things to see that there's no real point trying to follow like two set of a to do except for maybe scheduling in a few viewpoints and just buying them ahead of time i do recommend that you save some time to explore you'll feel very very safe here as a woman i've never felt safer i didn't have to worry in the metro or anything like that at the end of the day we went to the akihabara area which is known for its great nightlife and very cool things to do one of them being all of these arcades and fun stores and so we spent a lot of time and actually a lot of money trying to fish for things we didn't actually need, but they were just very fun and it's a fun way to spend time. One of the coolest things that there were actually professional gamers here practicing, as you'll see, and it was just very interesting to me to see how good they were. On the last day, we had some time before we had to head over to the airport, so we headed over to the Metropolitan Government Building. This building has a free viewpoint, so if you want to hit up a viewpoint but you don't want to pay a lot of money for it, then I highly recommend this one. It has like 360 views of this area of the city as well, but you get to see a lot of the parks like Yogo Yoyoshi Park, I think it's called. And it's just an awesome thing to do, especially because it doesn't cost any money. Before heading on to the airport, we did pass by a store to buy a lot of snacks to bring home. Last but not least, we headed over to Sensoji Temple and it was a very busy, very touristy area, but we think it was worth it. It was just very beautiful as always. There's a party in the backyard, dance your problems away. I'm all about the good vibes. I know you're all about the good vibes. Do you know how much I love you? Want to see you smile? Where's the happy girl that I know with a heart on fire? I'll do anything to make it fine, but I can tell that you have something on your mind right now. But I will make you forget all your As you'll notice here, I'm using my Andar belt bag. The bag itself has two main compartments and the leather is beautiful. I actually find that like the more I use it, the prettier it gets because it's starting to get a little bit of personality now. The buckle itself is made of metal, which is really nice because usually all of these belt bags have plastic buckles that I find with time, like wear and tear, just get weaker and weaker. If you're worried about maybe losing your things while you're traveling or just the busyness of an airport, or I can see myself using this when I'm a mom as well. Like we, we do want kids in the future and I just find that having my phone and my wallet always so close to me will come in very handy. But as I said, the main reason I use this bag on this particular trip and will be using it on all my upcoming trips is the fact that the front pouch is very nice and snug and the perfect place to put your passport so you don't lose it. And then the main pouch has just enough space for your wallet and your phone and any other things you may need to store. Um, like the JR Pass, a mask if you want to have one on you, your keys. And if you're interested, they have quite a few colors on their website. As I mentioned earlier, you can use Sophia A15 at checkout for 15% off. 
and although this content is sponsored i have had products from them in the past without them being sponsored and i genuinely was very excited when they wanted to sponsor this video because it's one of the brands that i've always dreamed of working for and thanks to you guys watching my videos i'm finally getting collaborations with brands this cool so thank you so much for supporting me and supporting my channel if you haven't already please do make sure to like subscribe and turn on notifications. Yep. Thank you so much for watching this video, guys. I hope that this helped you out. If you're going to Japan, I hope you have a wonderful time and that this video was able to help you a little bit. And I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks, bye.